So, hello. Um, it's Paul Griffiths from Client Advocates. Uh, today I've um, got David Arms with me. David um, is uh, the owner, founder, creator of um, 422 First. Uh, they're a, um, an agency that works with professional services companies um, uh, to basically to build and help them create closeness to clients um, but also to um, commercialize those relationships. Dave is also the author of a, a new book, which I understand is out this week even, uh, called The Me Agenda. So um, go and check it out on, on Amazon. Um, and the, the topic of today's conversation is around uh, this concept of fit for the future. So yeah. Dave and I have been chatting about things. We, you know, we, both, we both look at uh, client relationships and how they can be improved. Um, and we've been talking a bit about over the last couple of months, what could be done and what agencies and professional services companies could, could to do to improve things. We're not going to bother talking about the challenges because I think everybody knows what the, the challenges are. Um, I think most people do. Yeah. So David, yeah. give us, give us, give us your, for your starter for 10, what's, you know, what's the, what are the things that professional services businesses you think should be doing now to kind of respond and make sure they are close to that client? Yeah. Um, well, hi, Paul. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I think it's a really tough subject, and 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 if if it was easy, people would be doing and moving and stuff. So, yeah. um, I, I just want to caveat that it's it, it, for for you guys that work and and live and breathe and run your own uh, organisations. You know, um, you, you know, I appreciate the work that you're already doing. That you know, we're seeing some good stuff that's going on. But the, our general sense in the conversations that we had were. That, that there was some 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 things that we would have expected or hoped to have accelerated more, and I, th I think that's what we're going to really share. And, and the first area is around um, offer. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, we we we've, we've got a priv privileged position is that we don't only talk to the um, agencies, but we also talk to the end clients as well. And we get an opportunity to be with them and. Yeah. And, and a lot of the, the common theme that we're hearing from end clients is that they are in organizational redesign at the moment mm -hmm. and looking at how do they win in the future. And they are, um, as a result of that, going, the commercial guys are going back to their insight functions. So the client side insight teams and going, we need something new and different from you. And what, where I would start certainly is to be out really in front of my clients saying what is it that you need differently in 2021 what are the demands of your organization and what do we need to shape and change in the way that we engage with you and the way that we are we produce our offer so that we remain relevant uh, and ruthlessly relevant yeah. so that, that, that's where i would start no matter how hard that is yeah. to let go of the past of what's made you great in the past and actually just you know redesign and, and reshape your offer yeah okay but presumably that's not necessarily about okay because i'm always worried about when i talk about reshaping offer with with insight and you know they talk about they immediately go to a new methodology or a new way of doing things and it's that's not i don't think what we're talking no. about here is it no so uh, there's some really classic common themes that we're hearing from client side is things like repurposing existing insight so can you help me curate the insight that we've already done repurpose it get into that yeah. can you can you help me um bring together join the dots from multiple data sources yeah. for instance so that's an analytical maybe capability that's within that there's a whole thing of drive client side for self-serve so yeah. the visualize can can we can we go back and visualize the data in in a way that actually means that more people within that more stakeholders within their own organization can can, can, can self-serve you know, so it's not about finding the next amazing <laughs> behavioral science yeah, um, yeah. Uh, method out there it's it's sometimes it's a it's just a pivot it's a change it's a reshape it's a it's a re-energize of, of of what you might already have okay so I, i'm you know I'm, I'm a mindful of the fact that some agencies have, have have taken that step some are still in the process some haven't but what yeah. if, if assuming that that's kind of in play and hopefully it is by now yeah. Um, what's the what's the next thing you think they should be doing? Well, you and I talked about that. Um, it's it's all very well repurposing your offer, mm. but if nobody knows about it, <laughs> then, <laughs> then it's wasted energy. Yeah, sure. It's then about for me. It's it's about it's having it's been having more courage to mm. to to pin your position to a mast and go. This is what we are going to be famous for. And then just relentlessly campaign that so that 
your your mental availability is amazingly high for when that need is out there um and and um we're still being seeing people saying well you know we can do anything and yeah, that's yeah. not useful to to clients at the moment uh, sure but that also suggests that there's a there's a whole you know and i know we've talked about this a lot there's a whole sales and marketing set of activities which I understand people are concerned about cost and budgets and the rest of the moment, but, you know, but there's no point doing, to your point, the repurposing if you're not then going to do the sales and the marketing and invest in that sort of stuff. Yeah. That, that, that suggests there needs to be some um, allocation of budget or kind of some sort of ring fencing of, of, of this of, you know, money to be able to support this. Yes, I, absolutely. Ring, ring fencing investment. Yes, but, Actually, I think more critically, really ring fencing resource to do it. Okay. And I think what's really interesting, I don't, I was funny enough, just having a conversation this morning uh, about this is that actually a, a lot of the, the marketing and the communication mm -hmm. is, it, you know, through digital and virtual world is, you know, for a lot of people that, that, that own run businesses, you know, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm in my fifties now, Paul, and, uh, no, you know, surely uh, not. I, I, no, that's, that, that's, that's the right answer, by the way, <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but, but I am in my fifties. And so, you, you know, I need a 20 something year old to help me understand how to maximize social media, for instance, how to get my di digital message out, you know, how to, how to find influence and connect with them and all those kind of things. So for me, it's not, it's about opening your eyes to who you need in your organization to do that, ring fencing that resource, but also ring fencing that investment to campaign it continuously. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and the, 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 the final point, I think you, which you just touched on there, you've, you've talked about, you know, sort of having somebody in the business who's able to support you and do that, but that suggests that there needs to also be, as it was an investment in, in the marketing, the sales, but actually there needs to be an investment in the people. Yeah. You need, you need to bring the right people into the business or you need to give the people in the business that are in there yeah. the right opportunities. You do. And I think maybe the, the, the cynical viewers of, of this video might go, well, you will say that that's your business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but I, I, I say it with hand on heart that I, I think, you know, the conversations that I'm having with organizations is that there is a, a lot of positives that have come from this new way of working from working from home and uh, productivity yep. and, um, uh, and actually the belief that, you know, we don't need to all sit in the same premises in order to get yeah. stuff done is, it has, has really been proven to work, but there is a, but which is, there is also the other side of it, which is engagement, motivation, and energy. And, um, you, you, you look at all the data you like, and, and the, the one thing that you constantly come back to is that there is a direct correlation between engagement and productivity. Yeah. So we've got to find new and creative ways of keeping the engagement high mm -hmm. so that the productivity is high. And one of the bits of feedback that we're getting is that, people are losing that sense of development that of progression yeah. of moving forward and so building that into your plan and how you operate in 2021 is going to be essential yeah brilliant brilliant david look i'm very mindful of your time thank you so much you no need problem. to go off and promote your book uh, which I do. I, i'm going to remind people it's called the me agenda it's on amazon um yep. but david thank you so much for your time and um yeah talk to you soon it's always good to talk paul thank Cheers, you dude. take care